Chapter 4 Hello, my treacherous friends. The car was a white luxury sedan that would have been at home anywhere high-end business was conducted. We rode in awkward silence for almost a full half hour before my level of annoyance got the better of me. Do you always have to give the guy the silent treatment on the way to the airport, or is that just an added bonus because I'm so lucky? The vet took her time answering me. I don't know how you can be so concerned and at the same time keep making jokes. Her tone was odd, both complimentary and frustrated. I smiled a little as I answered, uh, Truthfully, I'm not making jokes for fun. Okay, maybe I am, but that's not the point. I looked out the window of the car at the streets, noting strongly again that I was in a foreign country in a situation that even in the movies strained credibility. I'm usually great in on-the-fly type scenarios, but this was something else. The point is, I keep joking because I'm nervous. It's not every day I get to go around the world and take up a mysterious dream job where my personal assistant is an attractive French woman. Yvette's reaction surprised me. Instead of her typical rebuff, she smiled softly. As long as we're being honest, I think I have more reason to be nervous than you. I started to ask her why, but she interrupted, telling me we had arrived at the airfield. And that's the second time something had prevented me from getting a direct answer I really wanted to hear. So I got out of the car and looked at the private Learjet, or something like that. I never cared enough about planes to bother with what kind of private jet makes it better slash worse than any other private jet, and had simply resigned that I would never own one. It was parked on the tarmac and was largely unmarked except for the orange striping along the sides. Yvette waved to a flight attendant and called out in French. I was really starting to feel like I should have taken more foreign language courses in college. Yvette guided me up the stairs as my luggage was loaded. I had flown in first class exactly three times in my life. The first time was on my honeymoon. The second time was when my father died and it was the only seat I could get on short notice. And the third time was when I treated myself to a trip to Vegas after my divorce. But given the things that I had seen that morning, I half expected the plane to be stacked through the roof with over-the-top luxury. Somewhat to my relief, the plane was very normal. I mean, it was still a high-end private jet, so the luxury was there, but just in a more normal fashion. I had settled into a comfy seat, and Yvette sat across from me, and, and she leaned back, her skirt slid upward silently. The material, it seemed, was strategically placed to distract me, I swear. It took a fair deal of effort to keep my eyes off her legs. I heard a man's voice from the hatch. Don't tell me how to write a three-part harmony. I know how it's done. I could do it in my sleep. That was the first thing I heard Darius say as he entered the plane. Darius was from New York. I, I learned later that he was recruited or hired or whatever as he scraped a living together by playing his guitar on a curb in Greenwich Village for change. He sat down in the aisle across from me. He was dressed simply, designer jeans and that Metro Bohemian style shirt and fashion sunglasses. His skin was slightly brown and I could see that he had a bit of Hispanic in his heritage. The lines on his face told me he was older than me, but not by much. He looked over at me and then Yvette and flashed a bright smile. Yvette, how have you been, girl? Yvette offered her hand, which he shook. I have been good. You? Darius again looked at me and then added, Is this him? Loose new golden boy? I took the opening to introduce myself. Hi there, Von Buren. Darius took my hand almost gingerly. His face was hard to read. He didn't give me his last name and I still don't know it to this day. Yes, this is Udlu Picked. Yvette answered. Darius eyed me intensely for a few seconds. You're a lucky dude, Von Buren. I felt the crooked grin come across my face. <laughs> Looks that way, doesn't it? Lou's been trying to get someone on the Paragon Project forever, he added. The Paragon? I asked, trying not to sound too much like the typical new guy. Darius laughed a little and again addressed Yvette. Wow, he signed up and he doesn't even know his own project? This is great. I'm a quick learner, I said defensively. Okay, dude, he mocked. Yvette murmured something to herself in French and shook her head and then interrupted us. You'll do fine, Darius. I've seen his portfolio. It's quite good. He glanced at me back to Yvette. If you say so, and I, I guess that's good enough for me. I was about to ask what project Darius worked on, but two things stopped me. Firstly, the realization that without even knowing what my project, the cryptically named Paragon, entailed, it would do me no good to hear about his project. Secondly, how best to tell you about it? Uh, okay. 
You know how in most action movies, the evil executive always almost seems to have a ridiculously hot secretary issue to him as part of his bad guy welcome basket? Start there. Not with the welcome basket, with the hot secretary. Now add in about 20% increase to just raw sex appeal, plus 15% increase to shampoo commercial hair. And before I forget, actually, I'll just give you the highlights and you can make your own decision. Yvette heard the car door slam outside the plane and placed a hand on my forearm. When I looked at her, she spoke very clearly. You may want to... No, don't warn him. It'll be more fun that way, Darius interjected with a smug look on his face. She pulled her hand away slowly. At this point, my interest level had been peaked. Darius' quick remark had been like telling me there's a steak. Now, you can have it, but only if you take the nuclear hot sauce with it. I love a challenge. Almost to a fault. And that's when I got a good look at why woman has long been viewed as man's blessing and curse, all five foot six inches over. The bad guy's uber hot secretary would be an understatement for what I saw walk onto that plane. Platinum blonde hair, check. All too revealing skirt, check. White button down shirt, low cut, also check. Purse that costs more than certain high end electronics, triple check. Legs that could stop traffic ending in very, very high heels. Fourth check. She covered her eyes with vintage aviator sunglasses and carried in one hand a phone, just like the one that Lou had given me. I guess my mouth was hanging open because as she crossed the cabin, she informed me in a very serious, clipped British accent, You might have more luck catching insects with an open mouth if you hung your head outside of the plane. My jaw snapped shut and I pulled my mind out of the gutter. I let fly with a response before I knew it. True, but then I wouldn't have the pleasure of being talked down to by someone who I doubt could open a pickle jar and assist it. Darius burst out laughing, and the woman removed her sunglasses, revealing a pair of smoldering dark eyes. She chewed on the earpiece of her shades for a moment and sat down f- across from Darius, who was still laughing. I considered offering a handshake, but thought it more fun to see how good the temptress was at verbal jousting. She fired first to my surprise. What are you doing here? Why are you dressed like you escaped from an old Navy commercial? <laughs> I cocked an eyebrow. Not bad. I didn't even think that old Navy in England. Uh, I'm here to see a few sites with my combination of abduction slash job offer, although the sight of that has struck me most was you walking onto the plane. But you might want to use a little more concealer next time, sweetheart. Your inner bitch is showing. Sir! Yvette snapped. Darius again roared with laughter, and the temptress barked at him. Would you shut up? Yvette motioned towards her. This is Bryn Steiner. She's part of your team. As much as I was enjoying busting her balls, I could smell the vapid skank rolling off Bryn the minute she walked onto the plane. And I didn't like her. So it turns out I have to work with her. Great. My tone evened out. Wonderful. Bryn took a long appraising stare at me, wrinkled her nose slightly. You'd be Van Buren, then? That's Vaughn, with a long A, I tilted my chin up. I would be. And what's your specialty? I mean, aside from sharpening your claws and luring children into your gingerbread house. Writing, she said pretentiously. A true pursuit. Not like bringing teenage fantasy to life in print. Oh, that tore it. You never, ever insult my work. Get with the times, hell on heels, I started. Comics and graphic novels have been on the rise for more than a decade. I have more talents than that at any rate. The plane engine spun up to power, much like Bryn's attitude. What you do by yourself on a Saturday night hardly constitutes talent, I'm afraid. She's good. Very good. Darius continued to take in the show, and Yvette had flopped back into her seat, content to let the two of us wear wear ourselves out on each other's defenses. Well, that depends on who you ask. I can put away a record number of hot wings if not interrupted. Not great, but not enough to hold off her dogs for a moment. Ah, yes. The American penchant for eating an absurd amount of fried or sauce-covered food. How original. Her eyes and harrowed slightly. She thought she was closing in for the kill. God bless America, baby. I may not always vote, but I'm patriotic enough. Besides, I'm having a hard time thinking a Brit should be in a place to judge me. I can't really hear you over the sound of America creating awesomeness like the Ford Mustang and, you know, edible food. I felt the plane leave the ground, and normally I'd be all for watching the earth drop away below from the window and a crack up in a good book to start passing the time. But not now. Not with, Amer- not with American pride at stake. And I'd go to hell with my face on fire before I let this condescending British she-devil think she was better than the USA. 
Brent, I could tell, was losing steam, but she was, as far as I could see, a practitioner of what I like to call John McClane style. You can beat him up, make him run through a whole skyscraper fighting terrorists barefoot, but he'll just keep coming back for more. And the only way to out McClane, McClane, is to embrace the same principle. I'll take every punch you throw so long as I can throw that one that takes you down. Well, she put her shades in her purse... Yvette, I guess, thought Bryn had conceded and waved the flight attendant over. She ordered a bottle of water and asked me if I'd like anything. Before I could answer, Bryn dove right in, guns blazing. Let me guess. You're on a private jet wearing jeans and a t-shirt. One could think you're a drinker of cheap American beer, but you also match wits well. Which says you've got more sophistication than other men your age. It's too early in the day for hard liquor. But you've not grown up in such finery, and you would hate to appear crass, so you'll probably consider scotch or whiskey. However, noticing your wristwatch, while not hugely expensive, does hint at a preference for a certain amount of masculinity, which leans towards practicality over image. You'll have an orange juice. Darius whistled an impressive note. (whistles) Flight attendant just stood there. He almost looked at me dumbfounded. You heard her. She was good. Very good. If she'd gotten the drink order wrong, I could have recovered easily, but now I was on the back foot. I needed to come back fast. You perform at parties, or did you learn how to guess a man's drink order while working your way through college at a high-end escort service? I do hear some of those British madams are just great to the girls. Bit harsh, true, but I don't do the light touch in verbal jousting. Just hit hard, or don't bother. I guess Yvette was getting tired of the clash with Titans and interrupted... Would you two be civil? You have a long flight, and I don't want her to spend it assing your face, Vaughn, because you can't let Bryn get the better of you. Darius chimed in. Yeah, she's right, bro. You don't play nice, do you, Bryn? Bryn crossed her arms over her breast. Not lately. I took the glass of OJ and a deep drink. Armistice, Bryn? The glass of OJ was set in front of her as well, and she replied, Agreed. I haven't had a ribbing like that since... Oh, your last encounter with tequila, Darius equipped. (laughs) A huge grin split his face. I laughed out loud. I would have gone for this same joke if she'd just not agreed to a ceasefire, which made me laugh all the harder. When she flung the nearly full glass of OJ in Darius' face. That's fucking great, Bryn. This is a $200 shirt, he bitched. Claws still out, Bryn returned. And yet you still look like a cheap knockoff of Gabriel Iglesias. (laughs) Darius stood up and stormed off to the lavatory griping in Spanish. Bryn raised the glass and casually asked, Refill, please. The vet leaned across the aisle and softly to Bryn, Was that necessary? Bryn smiled wolfishly. No, I suppose not. It was, however, quite fun. I smirked a little at this, and despite my intense dislike of her, I had to admit she had some style. A rare thing in people these days, I found. I continued to drink my orange juice and sat back to enjoy the flight. Yvette, however, seemed to have a different plan and was quick to take notice of my relaxed posture and pulled her phone from her pocket. Vaughn, I have a few questions for you. I rolled my eyes and sighed loudly. What is it? You want to make out? Just say so. (laughs) Brent snorted derisively and Yvette rolled her eyes. Sorry to disappoint you. This is business related. No. Well, then ask away. Yvette settled into her seat a bit further and readied her phone's notepad feature. Firstly, where did you grow up? America, I said flatly. I hate giving direct answers about myself. It makes me uncomfortable. And as much as I like being the center of attention, I don't like being under scrutiny. Clearly, Yvette returned. I let her hang there. I wasn't too keen on giving up too much information, and I don't know why. And? And what? I answered. This is important. Please, no games. Her blue eyes captured me at that point, and I was just suddenly unable to resist. Colorado, mostly. Some time in California. I volunteered after a moment. You live red color? She asked. Uh, Oranges, yellows, anything warm or autumnal, mostly. It varies by mood. Well, that was an easy answer. She input the answers and took a swallow of bottled water. Birthday? July 30th? I may have told her the year, but I'm not telling you. Man has to have an air of mystery about him, after all. How many girlfriends have you had? She asked without looking up from the phone. I felt my cheeks redden and I looked out the window, down to Europe far below. I stammered for a second, and if I'd learned one thing well from my father, it was, always brag with men. 
Never with women. It ends badly. So I stalled, albeit poorly. Why is that important? Yvette put down the phone and leveled those amazing blue eyes at me. I need to know more about you to help facilitate my role more effectively. And how does knowing how many girlfriends I've had factor in? Well, that's not an easy answer, she replied. I decided to be direct when I said, so make it easy. Can I be honest, she said. Oh, well, that was easy, I answered. Oh, I'm dying for a bit of honesty. I understand that you are entering a new world and that things are in, no doubt feeling a bit awkward. Also, I can understand that you've got your reservations about giving up too much too soon. But I would tell you, you have no reason to be nervous or reserved. She started. The French accent made a few of the words sound heavy and I had to really listen to make sure I took it all in. You are in Potem, which is where I come in. I interrupted, so you're my bodyguard too? Whether she knew I was joking or not, she ignored me. I have self-done duties that require me to... I, I, as I felt my eyelids grow heavy, she stopped talking. My eyes were having a hard time staying open, and before I knew it, I was out like a light. I slept like a rock. Son of a bitch. Drugged. Again. Crap. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.